Hello and welcome to Weirdos in the Wild with our co-host, A.J. Oxley, paranormal investigator with Beyond This Life Paranormal and multi-generational paranormal enthusiast, and Lynn Tincher, Beyond This Life Paranormal Investigator, Reiki Master, published author, and near-death experiencer. Travel with them, a couple of everyday weirdos, on a wild ride to all things paranormal and metaphysical. Coming up on Weirdos in the Wild, AJ and Lynn talk about demons, demon possession, exorcisms, and how to get rid of the demon living in your home. Listen up, folks. Hydra Publications is your one-stop shop for genre fiction, including those from horror master Michael West, starting with Poseidon's Children, The Legacy of the Gods, Book One. Man no longer worships the old gods, forgotten and forsaken. They become nothing more than myth and legend. But all that is about to change after the ruins of a vast ancient civilization are discovered on the ocean floor. Coast Guard officers find a series of derelict ships drifting in the current, high price yachts and leaking fishing boats, all ransacked and splattered with blood. Their crew is missing and presumed dead, and that's just the beginning. Do you struggle with depression, ongoing medical issues, or have you experienced past trauma? If you have, please consider the help of Energetic Healing. At Dragonfly Pond Holistic Services, we utilize Karuna Reiki, crystals to align and heal chakra function, meditation, and sound healing to address these issues and help you in your healing process. To learn more about energetic healing and how to contact us, visit our website at dragonflypondenergy.com. For those who call in to schedule an appointment, mention this ad and receive $25 off your initial visit. Welcome back, everybody, to our latest episode of Weirdos in the Wild. I'm AJ. And I'm Lynn. We're glad you're back with us again this this week. Um, we are going to talk about something completely different, completely off the wall, but of course weird. Um, but of course, we want to remind you, first of all, visit our website, sign up there, go to our Facebook page, go to Instagram, and what else? We have Twitter. Twitter. Yes, we always forget about the tweeter. <laughs> and um, sign up, hit that like, subscribe, I guess, whichever pattern or whatever platform you're on. And leave a message. You know, we love reading your messages. And as always, if you if you do have a story you want to tell, we love hearing the stories. So tell us your stories. We may contact you. You might even come on our show. So, again, bring keep bringing those stories to us. Right. You can, uh, like he said, you can visit our website at weirdosinthewild.com or you can email us at info at weirdosinthewild.com. If you got questions, let us know. As we've said before, we we would like to put together a list of questions and do a an episode that's just Q&A. I think that would be a lot of fun. Well, Lynn and I both think that would be a lot of fun if we could do that. And uh, let you guys know, we've got some exciting things that we're going to be doing as we, I don't know, what do you call our, our ghost hunting? Is that our day job? I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> That's our night job. <laughs> our night, I guess technically you're right. It's our night job because it happens at night. We've got some stuff coming up. We're looking forward to, and we're looking forward to sharing that with you all as well. Well, um, Let's kick it off. Last week, we talked about fairies. We talked about little people and fairies. This week, we're going to talk about demons. Ooh. Ooh, very scary. So, Lynn, kick us off here. All right. I did some research on where the word demon came from, and it actually has its roots in Greek, as I think most things seem to do. Um, it comes from diamond. D or D I A M O N, which means supernatural being or spirit, evil being that influences a person's character. Um, it's also known as a devil, especially thought of as one that would possess a person or act as a tormentor in hell. Um, it comes from diff several, I think pretty much every religion has demons in it, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. Um, for example, Christianity views them as falling angel, fallen angels. Um, we all are familiar with Satan and Lucifer. Believe it or not, those are two different demons from what I found. 
not the same one that we always try to associate those. Um, but they, it said that there's about 200 angels that fell to earth when Lucifer did and all became demons. And there's speculation that they multiply with both demons and with humans. That's an interesting thought. Yes. And I'm sure you came across as you were doing this, the, I guess the seven or I found seven. I also found 13. Mm -hmm. that they said were the most dangerous demons, which are the ones that are, um, um, when it comes to religion, are the ones that are, I guess, in hell and are the right hand, I don't know if they're men, but right hand demons of Lucifer. I did find this one little quote that I thought was interesting that says, not all evil beings are demons, but all demons are evil. And that they have a desire to harm, inflict pain, and they revel in the suffering of others. So that's something to keep in mind when you come across spirits and things that are evil. It doesn't necessarily mean it's demonic. Yes. Now, I'll tell you this. I don't, well, I have not, and I don't think Lynn has either, but we have not come across anything evil in our mm -hmm. ghost hunting experiences. Nope. And I'm going to tell you this. I don't want to. No. Nope. <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> and I hope we never do. I've come across things that's felt negative or, you know, kind of startled or scared me a little bit, but it's never felt evil. Been really fortunate, hopefully, like you said, that I never do that. Well, I'm going to ask you this, because as you talked about the, um, the fallen angels, and a lot of people believe that those fallen angels are, again, those... Um, Seven or thirteen, depending on which lo list you look at, are the the worst of the worst, I guess. Right. And that I guess that in in a lot of places we use the word Lucifer and Satan kind of interchanged, and they're actually two separate demons. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess there is a, and I was reading this because I didn't know this as I was looking into this. Um, I guess the in the Bible is that Lucifer is actually at one point in time is actually referred to as Satan, which I guess is where maybe the the questions or the intertwinedness of both of those names come together. Right. I don't know if you you saw that or not. I did, and I also saw that they were, you know, like I said, separate. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when I was looking, what I found was the seven demons, and I know you found thirteen, but they're like associated with the seven deadly sins. Yes. And one of them is Lucifer and another one is actually, oh, no, maybe not. But I was reading that um, Satan was actually Lucifer's right hand. So I guess it depends on which religious view you're taking. It's either they're the one and the same or they could be, you know, mm -hmm. two parts of the uh, management regime. <laughs> the management <laughs> regime. <laughs> I can't think of a better way to put it, but there you go. <laughs> yeah. They all sit on the seventh floor. So, um, you know, another thing that I found interesting is that um, some of these religions and and which I was surprised that so many different religions had beliefs in um, in demons. First off, as I did a lot of this research, but also how a lot of it is also tied to mythology, which you brought up to begin with, um, with the Greeks. Mm -hmm. It's basically in every religion that i found oh yes yeah you know from christianity to buddhism to hindu or you know japanese even in ireland and in the philippines it's demons are everywhere yeah and it, it makes you is it is it because there you know there are the real forms of demons or is it a way of you know folks that were you know, as we say back in the day their way of explaining things um you know, there's uh, information of out there that uh, specifically some of the, the churches believe that uh, that the evil spirits or demons will get to people when they are at their lowest point or when they are most susceptible. Yes. So there's always there's also the belief that um, you know, if you're sick or if you're mentally ill or if you have some sort of you know chronic illness that allows the demons to come in at that point in time. And I also saw that in a lot of cases and there are 
maybe another view on this is that the these demons actually cause those things to happen you know you they find somebody that's weak already and they you know put those thoughts into their head and and help yes them. yeah it's like that i that's kind of it that they you know they are preying on the weak mm -hmm. and and allowing that to be a power over that person then so it makes you wonder when you deal with so much you know mental illness and all that is it every time related to a demon or is there something else or how do you know the difference and you know how to treat it so I, I you know just in my mind is if you're going to therapy to help yourself and it's not working maybe reach out to a priest or the other way around if the priest isn't helping <clears throat> reach out to a therapist you know just that there could be both avenues at play right and and it could and it, it almost makes sense that you know that something terrible or evil would prey on you when you're at when you're at a time when you're when you're when you're weak and in, in like mental illness you know please you know i if you i believe you know that's a real thing and that people need to get help if they have it please do that um but i could also see where these demons or spirits or whatever you want to call them could come in and, and affect a person at that time too right. because mentally you're at a weak spot not just physically right and sometimes it comes from both but there's a you know there is a number if reach out to your friends family therapists whatever but you can dial 988 on your phone as well especially if you're contemplating suicide if something gets you gets you to that point or even even anywhere close to that point don't don't let it get that far reach out and get some help yeah. i guess maybe at this point we need to talk about a few other demons you know we've okay. already got lucifer a little little bit but and what I'd found um, with the tying to de the seven deadly sins that Lucifer is associated with as the demon of pride and that he is the typical wing-like entity with horns growing from his head. Yes. And I think that's the picture that we see as what we know as, in most people, as the devil, right? Yeah. So I picture him as being, you know, red, evil, angry red, which I find that later in another thing, but. Uh huh. And I, in, it's it's interesting that you said that you know he's, and and, and most religions are I should say most religions in the Christian religion, you know he's believed to be the the fallen angel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the one that was God's right hand, or whenever he did his uh, rebellion that he fell to earth and was sent straight to hell, where he became the the leader of hell and all the other little demon minions. That, <clears throat> and then we have the second. Uh, demon I ran across is Beelzebub that we all probably know from the Queen song. Are you going to sing it? No, no, I'm not. Not today. Oh, <laughs> we'll do that later. But all right. He's the demon associated with gluttony. He's also known as the Lord of Flies and the Prince of Hell. Um, he's not a demon to be trifled with. Second in command with Lucifer. So I'm, I guess I was wrong on Satan, or at least it's another view that he's second in command with Lucifer. But he's always hungry for food and material possessions. And evidently he spews flies or it can appear as flies. So that makes me think of the Amityville horror where all the flies are on the windows. And I don't know, maybe that's associated with Beelzebub. Did you find out anything mm -hmm. else on him? No, just I found exactly what you found about him. We must I think him. that's, he, I think he is one of the ones that most people do know. Yeah. Um, is he the one that... Is he the one that takes the, the shape of a sea serpent? Who is that? Uh, I can't remember my... He's um, Leviathan, the demon. Leviathan. Okay, yes. It interest, that was one of the other things that interested me is that some of the shapes that these uh, demons would take. Mm -hmm. Which demons is something that I write about. That's like one of my overarching themes in all my books. <clears throat> And there was two incidences. One of them, I was sitting at home alone writing the book. I was writing an exorcism scene. And I swore I heard something behind me. My dog even started barking at it. And it scared me to death. I could close my computer and ran upstairs. <laughs> and then the other time I felt like, because I was describing and coming up with this demon and, and I had all these crazy features that it had. And, and it kind of freaked me out. And I had to stop writing again. I've taken myself to the beach before to 
so I could look at a palm tree and kind of ground myself. But I don't think demons are anything to be messed with, and I'm always afraid I'm going to conjure one up. <laughs> Let's not do that, please. Nope, nope. Try my best not to. The third demon I came up with was, I'm hopefully I'm saying this right, was Santh Sathanas, S-A-T-H-A-N-A-S. Yes. The demon of wrath. This one is also the one that's also known as Satan. Very angry demon who tempts humanity and causes them to sin. He's the image that you see that looks like a goat, the goat head with the horns. Um, you see him on tarot cards, some tarot cards like the Rider Waite deck. So if you, you know, you're associating one with the, I guess, the, the cloven feet or whatever, that that's probably Satan or Satanus. I'm guessing is how you say it. Yes. And then we talked about the, the bison, right? Mm -hmm. Demon of envy. Uh -huh. demon. That one is not a fallen angel. That it, it's an ancient sea monster that has bones protruding from its body, resided in the abyss. And it was a sea monster that sided with Lucifer and is now the gatekeeper to hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The gatekeeper to hell. Just what I want to meet, you know, when you see when you get there. Yes, the pictures of him is what of what I've seen of this is what you would consider a, a sea creature. Yeah. Destroying ships and uh, uh, I guess almost like what you would, a kraken type of uh, beast. So Kraken on steroids, I think. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want to run into that one when I'm deep sea fishing. The fifth one is mammon. Uh-huh. Demon of greed comes from the Latin word for wealth. And he preys on those that are inve totally invested in hoarding money. Um, this is where the one where the saying comes from is that you cannot serve God and mammon. Um, yep. Become a slave to his every whim because he promises you riches beyond your wildest dreams. And he's actually, this one takes on a human-like form. This is one that uh, you know, comes straight from the Bible and that Jesus himself mentions it and, and says that, the phrase you said, you cannot serve both God and man. And, you know, I guess this is also where the phrase um, money is the root of all evil mm -hmm. comes from demon of greed, mamma. They say that he is one of the high ranking demons. If there is such a, it was, we talked about the hierarchy. He does take a human like figure and is usually is seen with some sort of wealth, like, you know, clutching something of wealth. Holding bags of money or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Bags of money, gold, something that we would consider of wealth. So well you want to take the next one? Because you don't want you want me to pronounce this, don't you? <laughs> Velfagor, is that the next one you had on your list? I say, yeah. It works for me. Um the demon of sloth is the demon that is looking for the easy way out. So I guess, you know, when you think of a demon that comes to take over or take somebody over, they're trying to lure you as an easy way out of whatever it may be. That he would prefer to sit back and find ways to have it done for him instead of doing it. You know, at its core, this is the lazy man's demon. His demonic power comes in the was what would religiously would become in the form of whispers, whispers and false promises. It says he will fill our heads with schemes and ways to circumvent processes to get a favorable result. He's the ultimate get, get rich quick scheme and undoubtedly the demon behind almost every clickbait ad on the on the internet. This is what I read, which I thought was kind of funny. It also says that he's a shapeshifter and can take a form, take the form of whatever his victim will listen to so that he can have the most influence on, on his victim. Last one I found with the deadly sins, and I'll try to pronounce this one since you were so gracious to do the other one, Asmodeus. Yes. And he's the demon of lust. Mm -hmm. Commands the power of 72 legions of demons. So I guess this uh, lust thing is, you know, major business here um he ensures that people give in to their carnal desires and explores the boundaries of their sexual appetite and the this is a weird thing that he's strongest in november i would have thought february but hey <laughs> hmm. 
So I don't know. That one's interesting. And I think he was, I read somewhere that he might have been, or was that someone else? Never mind. That might have been someone else that was the parent of the incubus and succubus. I think that was Lilith, honestly. Um, we'll get back to Lilith here in a little bit, I'm sure. Yes. Lilith is a, well, as, as I was doing some research too, I found some of the other religions that have different um, demons. And Lilith is one of those, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. They're saying she came actually before Adam and Eve, or I guess before Eve, because she was Adam's first wife. And she had like fiery red hair, was always, um, you know, always presented or portrayed as um, totally nude. Um, said that she and she um, didn't want to become subservient to Adam like God wanted, so she left the Garden of Eden, and she bedded several other angels before getting with Samael, S A M A E L, and then she gave birth to the incubus and the succubus, incubi and the succubi. When she was kicked out of heaven, she was actually in heaven. She became a uh, Samael actually was kicked out of heaven and became the demon king. But she's also, Lilith is also known as the night monster, demon of children and pregnant women, child stealing demon. She's very feminine, like I said, attractive woman. And she's always portrayed in a provocative pose. And she is from Judaism, correct? Yes. So what else did you uh, find? Well, I'll just hit a couple more of these here. We won't go through all of them. Um, lot folks <laughs> there is a lot i mean i had no idea there was a lot but these are some from the other religions um judaism had one here that's called the shedim and it's not really a single demon but a group the name that they've given a group of evil spirits um i just wanted to hit on this one because what struck me about this is these look like aliens what you would consider an alien yeah i agree um and I, and it almost makes you wonder, as you know, as weirdos in the wild that we are, you know, is was this an alien that came to this from to Earth, and maybe that's where these um, originally came from? That's what made me think about it. You know, um, I know that's scary stuff, isn't it? But um, and taking it in a different direction, right? Um, but it kind of it did make me think about that, and it you know it was uh, um, you know they were viewed as an evil spirit or even a lesser god, and um, and some of them they consider to be those offspring of Lilith as well, mm -hmm. um, and so it just made me kind of wonder you know with this look is was that a way to explain maybe something they did not understand and maybe that what they did not understand was that these were beings from somewhere else instead of just being a a demon which would make sense since they behave di differently they kind of flock together and work in groups or you know that's which is different than most most of the demons either um you know act alone or as modius that had that leads the 72 legions of demons Makes you wonder if maybe some of those lesser legions kind of fell under his command whenever they flew in from whatever faraway planet. <laughs> to yeah. The Incubus and Succubus, I've seen a lot of shows, that, a lot of movies and stuff that really portray these uh, creatures. You know, they're, they're the male and female demons of carnal desire. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some thought in theory that maybe the church used them as ways to try to control the people so that they would think of the dangers of sex or the dangers of having multiple partners or whatever. It's just a way to control people. Like if, if you're doing all these things, we don't want you to do it's, you know, you're dealing with these demons, put a little scare into them. So that was an interesting little side note I found on that. Um, you know, I was looking at some of the things that I think that other people may uh, know in, um, in Hinduism, there are some that I think people have seen pictures of before, and Kalai is one, K-L-A-I, Bandarusura, Sura, Ban, <laughs> the Sura, I guess is the way you say it. Us folks from Kentucky can't pronounce, right? <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry if I, um, um, <clears throat> but I think that maybe some people would understand these or have seen these because they're depicted as women that have um, more than two arms. 
Right. And I think that in the Hindu religion, I think that people have seen these before and even at without the Hindu religion. So I think maybe those were two that um, they had come across or maybe even did not know what it was, but have seen those types of pictures before. And also in Japanese, um, some of the beliefs around the, I guess, of what you would consider what you would see in Japanese as the demons and the dragons that are in a lot of Japanese um, folklore type of things. And um, or it, where you would see that the samurais or the ninjas would be fighting these demons or dragons. Um, again, is it because there was a an actual dragon or was this a a way for them to describe what this actual demon was that 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 they had came across? And your your mind tries to. And this is another episode that we'll talk about someday, how your how your mind wants to put things in the only box that it knows. So if you were to come across, you know, something that was a demon, um, would your would your mind try to put it somewhere not a demon or something that is paranormal? But is it a dragon? Is it a some sort of animal like that 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 is supposedly had roamed the earth at one point in time? So. Right. And then I, I found, too, that Ireland has what they consider a demon is the headless horseman. I thought that was interesting because uh, you know, we see that in like the, the cartoons and, and, right. and it almost takes on a comedic. You think of it as being funny or whatever. But in Ireland, it's really considered a demon. That struck me as interesting. And it, it was not something I expected to find in this research. <laughs> and then they also had the German Krampus which I just watched that movie the last this last Christmas that uh, I'd never seen it. I'm like, you know, people talk about what a cult film this is and, and all that. And have you seen it? It's pretty, pretty wild. I've not seen it. I've not seen it. I mean, you should. Um, I'm glad I did. It's, it's absolutely insane, I think, but it was, it was actually a pretty decent movie, but now I know what they're always talking about when they're talking about Krampus at Christmas. Cause he's like a Christmas. Yeah. Christmas. I, I did read about this. I didn't, I, I've not seen the movie. I did find it interesting that instead of giving out gifts, he dealt out punishment. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's a punishment in the coal and the stocking, right? Yeah. Very good underlying tone, underlying story. Um, I don't want to give it away too much, but you actually deal with the demon, I guess, in it. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Just, it was very interesting to me that the more, that around the globe than just I think what a lot of us know, mm-hmm. especially that comes from just the Christian faith, right? That there, and that makes me think. You know, even if you stand back and you take a non-religious view, um, you think that there has got to be some creatures out there that are evil and dark and influential and and you know thrive on causing others pain or whatever. Because for for all the religions to have that. It makes you wonder what's what is behind that driving force. So, Mm -hmm. um, like you said, I don't want to run into one. No, I don't either, for sure. And I think that, you know, a lot of people can and kind of steering in a different direction a little bit. You know, a lot of people would say what you just said, Lynn. What is it? What is, is it something that we don't know? Is that a way that we explain it that we don't know what it is? You know, you, you talk about some of the ones that we talked about before and the shapes they take. Uh, which one did you say was the one that took on the goat type of shape? Satan. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that the goat man? Yep. That makes, I thought of that too. <laughs> you know, is that is that the goat man? Um, the dog man that you come across? Is that, you know, is uh-huh. Satan? I mean, who knows? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Is, is, it, is it Lucifer? I mean, so is it a way to explain these strange beings cryptids whatever you want to call them and, that people have come across during the whole you know period of mankind almost right and we have you know the shapeshifter belphegor mm-hmm. the one i made you pronounce yeah uh, you wonder if he's skinwalker because those were shapeshifters yeah and that's that's native american mm-hmm. religion right there and beliefs so So, yeah, it's all through. Well, let's take a quick break and then we can come right back. And I was going to talk about a little bit about the belief in specifically in the Catholic Church and the the belief in exorcisms. 
That sounds good. And then I'll follow up towards the end of the program on if you have a demon, what do you need to do? Okay. All right. Hang on with us. We'll be right back. Hydra Publications is your one-stop shop for genre fiction, including those from horror master Michael West, starting with Poseidon's Children, The Legacy of the Gods, Book One. Man no longer worships the old gods, forgotten and forsaken. They become nothing more than myth and legend. But all that is about to change after the ruins of a vast ancient civilization are discovered on the ocean floor. Coast Guard officers find a series of derelict ships drifting in the current, high-priced yachts and leaking fishing boats, all ransacked and splattered with blood. Their crew is missing and presumed dead, and that's just the beginning. Do you struggle with depression, ongoing medical issues, or have you experienced past trauma? If you have, please consider the help of Energetic Healing. At Dragonfly Pond Holistic Services, we utilize Karuna Reiki, crystals to align and heal chakra function, meditation, and sound healing to address these issues and help you in your healing process. To learn more about energetic healing and how to contact us, visit our website at dragonflypondenergy.com. For those who call in to schedule an appointment, mention this ad and receive $25 off your initial visit. Welcome back to Weirdos in the Wild. Before we return to our program, AJ and I would like to take a moment to remember my brother, John Tincher, co-founder of Beyond This Life Paranormal, and Alan Oxley, AJ's father. Both passed away just before we recorded our first episode. Each and every episode going forward from this one on will be in remembrance of them. Thank you. All right, we're back. And let's go ahead and let's talk about um, exorcisms. You know, I think this is a something that has been going on forever in the Catholic Church. Basically, it's it, it is it is very interesting to me that um, that the Catholic Church does specifically train priests to do exorcism. You know, it is a belief that there are evil spirits and evil demons that do come into people's lives, and that's from the Catholic Church. That is not, you know, just my belief or Lynn's belief or anybody else's. And the Catholic Church believes this. The belief is that these are victims of a demonic possession, and they believe that an exorcism is a sacramental, but not a sacrament, uh, unlike a baptism or a confessional. Um, an exorcism is the integrity and integrity and efficacy do not depend on the rigid use of interchanging formula or on the ordered sequence of prescribed actions. Its efficacy depends on two elements. That is the authorization from a valid and listed church authorities and the faith of the exorcist. So they do believe that this is something that is, is to be asked publicly in the name of the church, in the name of Jesus Christ, and that they believe that the evil power or the evil one, as they refer to it, is withdrawn from that person. You know, it's even changed over the, the years. And the last actually change was in 1999. And this was actually by the Catholic Church. And according to the Catholic Church, it can only be done by an ordained priest and with the permission of a bishop. And only after a, a medical examination of that person so they can make sure and exclude the possibilities of any type of illnesses, including mental illness. Right. But these priests are ones that are specifically trained. And there's, um, they're just not, you know, any type of priest can do it. And I found that to be very interesting too. And there were, there are, there is a, basically a ritual that is performed and that they have to learn and they will go through. It is funny that though, that they do also mention that, you know, um, most of the cases that are reported as then needing a, an exorcism, the Catholic Church does not do them, or, or as they say, does not require them. They do consider it a very rare phenomenon, and something that the Church does say is it is easily confused with mental illness. Have you seen the movie The Right, R-I-T-E? It has Anthony Hopkins in it. I have not. I recommend that. It's actually based on a true story about a priest and becoming an exorcist. 
And it's some of the best acting I have ever seen Anthony Hopkins do. And he's phenomenal in everything he does. This, you know, this makes me think of that, um, that movie and it's, I don't know, it's chilling, especially when you watch it and know that it's based on a true story. <laughs> you know, um, I, I did see this and there was a, a, a list here, four or five things, I guess more than four or five, but signs of a demonic in, uh, invasion uh, of a person. And they said some of these things are using languages unknown to the person or the people around them. Mm hmm. Um, having extraordinary strength or resistance to um, physical restraint, knowledge of events or people that persons could not have possibly known, an aversion to holy objects or places such as holy water or churches, self-harming, violent actions, aggressive behavior, ailments or conditions that cannot be diagnosed or treated medically. Again, going back to what we talked about earlier, you know, Praying on the weak. Right. Hallucinations. Uh, hearing voices. Abrupt changes in behavior and or a person's person personality. So I guess you could see where a lot of there also goes back to the medical piece there where mm -hmm. they want to make sure that is it, again, something medically. But if you kind of get to that point where you can't figure out what it is medically. Do your priest. Exactly. Exactly. I just, I, I've also, I've always found it interesting that you know, the Catholic Church says, yes, this is a real thing. My son-in-law is a theologian. Maybe we should get him on the show sometime to talk about this. He and I have had some some really great discussions um, <clears throat> between that and on Dante's Inferno, which is related to this as well. So mm -hmm. that'd be, he'd be a, be a great guest to have on the show. Tell us then, what do we do? This is something I've actually been involved in a little bit. I should probably tell a little bit of a story, too, that several years ago, I think I might have told it on another, it might have been on Chris's show, the Dimensions Radio, but I had seen something in my bedroom. I heard it first. I heard wings flapping, and it woke me up, and I turned on the light, and I saw this dark creature sitting on the top of my mirror in the bedroom. It had a kind of a, it was evil looking, had a little bit of a human body and wings it was maybe three feet tall part of me thought that was a dream um until i was talking about it with my in-laws family and she my mother-in-law said well wait you know granny used to see that all the time in there i'm like well why didn't you tell me because i'm living in her house you should have told me that there's this little demon like thing i didn't really feel it was evil but it you know it looked it had the qualities that it would look like it was some kind of a you know, demon. And, and you saw it in the same room or just in the same house? In the same room. It did the exact okay. same thing. It used, and we yeah. had different furniture, but it would go sit on her mirror. But it's just, you know, and it would fly across the room. You can hear it in the room. It, I thought it was a bat. So it was like a little gargoyle type of Kind creature. of, yes. Um, but, it, you know, it but, had a human kind of close to a human body, but not really. It still it was very animalistic, but huh. it's creepy as hell. <laughs> I thought gargoyles were supposed to keep away the bad stuff. Huh? I know. So, maybe, you know, it didn't really feel evil. So maybe that's what he was doing. Might have been protecting the house. Well, that's another that's another story we can talk about, too. So, yeah, I got stories about that. So, <laughs> oh, good. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, so that kind of gets me a little bit of a segue into this. And what do you do if you do have an actual demon in your house? Um, AJ's already talked about what to do if you, you know, become possessed or know know someone that's possessed. You, you know, you you get you all move. you can. From, yeah, you move. <laughs> you move. <laughs> that's one way to get away from it. But, but you, it follows you. Sell it to somebody else so they can deal with the. <laughs> <laughs> No, get, that's mean. I know. Sorry. It's your demon now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I have, you know, several steps. Some of them um, I've done before. Um, Missy that's on our team, she does these steps as well. Um, just so everyone knows that both Missy and I are Reiki masters. Um, we're not taught to do this when you're going through Reiki training because Reiki is a healing um modality that you learn and it's it's to heal but 
when you start working with energies and start opening up those channels, you start seeing these things and you can uh, actually use the same type of energies to help um, because, you know, it's, it's, it's a helpful healing energy and you can use that energy to dispel this, this evil stuff that may be in your house. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that, but the, the first thing that you can do is you can go around your house, you can open all your windows and I know and doors, and I know everybody's heard of taking sage and burning sage. Um, you light it and let it burn for about 60 seconds and then you blow the flame out and then it just is a smoldering smoke. And you walk around like the border of your house and you you like waft the smoke in the doorways and the windows and the corners because, you know, these evil entities like to hide in the corners because the corners tend to get darker in the house or whatever. Um, so the sage can drive them away. It's also been, you know, the uh, Native Americans use it for the same reason. Plus also um, the sage smoke has been known to kill germs out of the air. So it can help. It really, truly does help cleanse your home in more more ways than one. If you can't, like if you have asthma or something and you can't breathe the smoke or you live in an apartment, you don't want to set off all the smoke alarm. You can use white sage essential oil in water and put it in a spray bottle and go around and, you know, the same concept, spray everything down, spray your windows and your corners and your ceiling. And uh, this is an important thing to do while you're doing that is you need to say a prayer out loud over and over and over as you go. And it doesn't have to be a religious prayer. It can be something like um, what I've done is like, especially if I've gone into someone's house, that's not Christian or whatever. It's, you, I just say like smoke of air, fire of earth, cleanse and bless this home and hearth, drive away all harm and fear and only good may enter here. And you go and you say that as you, you know, it's kind of your way of commanding whatever's in the house to leave. The other thing that you can do, um, especially if you do have religious background or, or want to tie it to your religion, um, like for Christian religion, you can recite Psalm 23 or, you know, just anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, you can do research into your own uh, spirituality and, and come up with something. Or you could say something as simple as no demons are welcome in this space. I command you to leave. This is a place of light and love. You know, it doesn't have to be religious. You just have to have that full intent to get rid of it. If you want to work with your religion, by all means, you know, it's it's the same concept. Another one that's kind of silly, I think, but it evidently is supposed to work is you bang on pots and pans as you walk around the house. In the same way as, as doing your sage, you make this noise and it's supposed to chase them all away. But I'm sure you need to do your 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 prayers or your your mantras or whatever as you're going through. Um, you just annoy them and they leave. That's it. If you're right. banging the pots of pans. I wouldn't want to be there either. So no, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> um, after you've done, that, uh, there's uh, some things you can do to make sure that you protect the home so that all this stuff can't come back in. Um, you can, if you have access to holy water, um, you can put that in a spray bottle or sprinkle or whatever, because I think you can buy the little bottles that you can, you know, sprinkle drops, um, mm -hmm. whatever you want to do, or you can put it in a spray bottle and go around the same thing, get your doors, your windows, your corners, um, just give it everything a nice little sprinkle of holy water. If you do all these things and it doesn't work, call out to a professional. You can get a priest, a healer, like the, you know, like Missy and myself. But be one thing I want to really call out is beware of scammers because there's a lot of people out there that claim they can do this or claim you have a demon and you really don't like Keith age was talking about in one of the other podcasts. Um, so if you're having issues and all that, make sure that you don't pay them if they are requiring payment until after, you know, they've gotten rid of your demon or, you know, they may be trying to pull your leg, boo you. So it may not be a demon. You just yeah. may have a, a little spirit that lives in your house and they're right. not being evil, but it may just scare you. Right. Or you might have a German shepherd that drops a ball down your stairs in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's one of the things that you could do is reach out to your paranormal investigative teams that are in your area and have them come and do an investigation. If you've got a good reputable team, they will let you know if they think there's something there. And then you can, you can go from there and try and get rid of it. Or, you know, it doesn't hurt to do these things to, to prevent it or get rid of it. Just if you feel uneasy in your home. Mm-hmm. Some things, so other things to do to kind of keep these things away is avoid 
negativity in all forms like you know don't don't just watch negative films or music or you know I enjoy a good horror film or whatever so it's not saying don't ever do that but don't make that everything that you do or you know just kind of get take it with a grain of salt and try to keep it as light as possible uh, that's that old adage that you know that they can feed off of that negative mm -hmm. energy Absolutely. just as a negative person can you know cause and you know one bad apple i guess is that whole right. old set you know one bad apple in the group well don't be that bad apple and don't don't add to that negative energy if there is that in your house right so avoid that um, another thing you could do on the, the flip side of that is play a lot of happy music or, you know, just anything that brings in some good energy, bring in some people you really like, have a good party, you know, um, don't think anything. <clears throat> negative. Um, another thing that you could do is use crystals. Uh, you can set them in your windowsills. Uh, one thing that you could do to charge those crystals, because crystals work on energy vibrations. Um, mm -hmm. there's certain crystals like, uh, kyanite, selenite, obsidian, hematite, desert rose, and black tourmaline, they all help combat or um, absorb negative energies. And you want to make sure that they're charged and ready to go. You can get, you can uh, charge them under a full moon, which basically all you do is you set it in a windowsill or set it outside. And uh, by morning, it's it's charged with that energy. Or you can reach out to a Reiki master and we could use the Reiki energy to charge those and get it positive. If it's, you know, if something's been protecting you for a while, we can clean the negative energy that it's absorbed or whatever away and it'll be ready to go again. Yep. Um, Black term. Stay tuned. That's a, that's an upcoming episode. That's right. Hint, hint. We are going to talk about crystals. But my two favorite for, for this specific purpose is black tourmaline and selenite. Selenite is like a major charger um, mm -hmm. cleanser. It's like one of the best cleansing crystals there is. Um, it's very soft. You don't want to get it wet because it can disintegrate. But it's a really beautiful crystal to work with. And black tourmaline, it just, it just feels good. I put it, I carry it in my pocket. Every time we go on a ghost hunt, I've given everybody on our team a piece. They carry it in their pocket. Um, you yeah. Know. I do. My piece of coal is what I call it. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Santa Claus, Lynn gave me coal. So. That's right. <laughs> for his birthday, yeah. It wasn't even Christmas. Gave it to him for his oh, birthday. Oh, gosh. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. The lump of coal was later. I gave you a little tiny lump of coal. <laughs> Once you get your crystals charged or whatever, you just put them in your windowsills or around your door or, or wherever the negative energy is hanging out. Um the other thing you can do is sprinkle salt. You can actually get blessed salt. If you want, you can ask your priest to bless it or, you know, a healer to bless it before you use it. Um, sea salt is the best. And you just sprinkle it around your doors and windows. Um, you want to do that like every couple of months so that it could stay fresh. And it's, salt is a very protective thing. And you, I'm sure you've seen in movies and stuff where, um, you know, to protect yourself from demons or fairies, even you do a circle of salt. Or you yep. know, performing a magical rite, you want to sit in a circle of salt. Salt really makes that barrier. Um, the other thing is wearing items or talismans like your rosary. That's you know definitely what a lot of exorcists, Catholic exorcists use, um, or crucifix. Um, the Na Native Americans did dream catchers. Um, you can wear bracelets with protective stones, which Missy is really fantastic about keeping us stocked in those she loves to make them and they're they're beautiful so we all wear them all the time um and she she does the she imbues them with reiki energy as well before she gives them to you um one of the other things you can really do is like control your own energy like if you're looking in a mirror and you're thinking gosh i look ugly today i got a zit right here or just you know i'm fat or whatever whenever you start thinking negative catch yourself Stop thinking that, um, you know, recognize that those thoughts are there that might be a demon making you think that we learned that earlier. So learn to catch that and stop that. Um, think positive. Um, that's sometimes a lot easier said than done because life is hard, but do your best to think positive. Um, mm -hmm. Meditation is a great tool. Uh, you can learn to control your emotions. Um because, you know, the emotions are what the, the demons want to control. 
because that's how they control you. Right. Meditation. is. <clears throat> I, I meditate all the time. I love it. It's my way that I connect to everything and brings my blood pressure down, gets me more chill. Just I highly recommend meditation. I'm actually trained in, to teach that as well. And just, you know, recognize if you, and this is something I'm guilty of, even with all this other stuff, is I worry a lot about a lot of different things. Worrying gives helps give them control because they'll use that to also control you because you're not in a good state. Um, that makes sense. I did not know that, though. That yeah. that makes sense. So stop your worrying because you can't. I guess I, I'm the same way. I got to got to control that then. Yeah. So if you're like me, I'm always thinking about the past or the future when really I need to be thinking about right now because that's all you got ever at any point in time is right now. So there's no sense in worrying about the past or the future. My little soapbox there, <laughs> but that's something I'm still working on on a daily basis, I think, because I'm a big worrier. Um, so if you, you know, if you're trying all this stuff on your own and you're not getting anywhere, like we said earlier, reach out and get help. Um, therapy is phenomenal. I've gone to therapy myself, mostly for PTSD with my heart disease, um, where I had died and almost died several times since then. Um, I had a lot of that to, to work through myself. Therapy really helped me uh, deal with ways to, to deal with that. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that need to go for depression or just anything, just, I mean, a lot of workplaces will give you three free therapy sessions. If you just want to go and say, Hey, I keep thinking negative about myself. Help me get out of this rut. I mean, it can be something as simple as that. Um, go and get your, <clears throat> you know, if you're stuck and you, you know, even trying to help yourself isn't working, make sure, um, you know, you can reach out to your priest to say, hey, there might be something else going on here. Or, you know, reach out to your, to your Reiki masters that you, you know or find one if you don't know them. Um, and, you know, get help that way, too. And like I said earlier, especially if you're to the point that you're thinking about suicide, reach out to any of these people, your friends, your family, somebody. Don't go through that alone. There's the, the suicide crisis lifeline that's, I think, you, all you have to dial is 988. Just remember that number and you'll be able to get to somebody that can help talk you through things, um, help you get get the help that you need. So, you know, this is a heavy topic today, quite different from our fairy discussion on the last episode. So we apologize for that, but it's something that <laughs> needs to be discussed, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> yes, you, as you all know, we're going to have a wide variety of topics. Yeah. Um but we are very, when it comes to this part and it comes to, you know, the, the part that talks about mental illness and how that a demon can come into somebody's world when you're at your lowest. Um, it is important. For, and, and Lynn and I both believe that. So, yeah. Um, and it may not be mental illness. It may be physical illness, but um, that is, yeah. that is something too. If you're not feeling well, go see your doctor. Um, you know, it could be something that's very serious and um, and these evil spirits or entities will take advantage of that. Right. And even, you know, <clears throat> if your doctor, or, you know, reach out to your Reiki healer, which your Reiki healer should, if they're any bit of a decent Reiki healer, will tell you if you're having issues to make sure that you go to the doctor because Reiki complements that. It doesn't replace medical right. treatment. Um you know, it's just something to to watch out for because, you know, there's a lot of, even even with Reiki, there's a lot of people out there that try to take advantage of people with that. And it just kind of pisses me off. So <laughs> I make sure oh. I tell you how it is. Oh, we hit it. We hit it. We hit a hot button. We hit a hot button with me. Yeah. Because maybe that's a demon possessing this person that's trying to do that to you, making you think you're getting good treatment being taken care of when you're really not. Yeah. Not to put up a downside to Reiki because there's a million, well, maybe not a million, but there's a lot of really great people out there that's doing it for the right reasons. And yeah, you just need to, you know, make sure you find those. All right. My soapbox, I'm going to put it away now. Okay. <laughs> well, 
we hope you all have enjoyed this today. Um, we, we took a little different direction, and we're going to continue to take some more different directions in the future. Um, this past week, Lynn and I came up with a huge list of things that we want to talk about. Yep. Um, and that list continues to grow. It seems like every time we talk or, or text or, hey, I've got another idea. So yep. plus we've got some some stuff coming up. We're going to be out and about at our night job, as we said before. <laughs> and uh, uh, we've got some, some stuff. Hopefully we can talk to you a little bit more about that as well. But please continue to listen. Go to our all of our social medias. Again, we'd love to hear from you. And if you got questions, let us know. We are definitely want to hear those questions. Not that we're experts, but you know, we'll we do. are weirdos and we'll try to answer those weird questions. Yep. So or point you in the right direction. All right, Lynn. Anything else from you tonight? I don't think so. I think that's enough. All right. You know what to do. Take us home. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone, and keep it weird, y'all. Thank you for joining us at Weirdos in the Wild. Please show us some love and support on our Patreon account at Weirdos in the Wild. Like us on all of our social media. And if you've had an experience you'd like to share with us, visit our site at weirdosinthewild.com. Until next time, keep it weird, y'all. Hydra Publications is your one-stop shop for genre fiction, including those from horror master Michael West, starting with Poseidon's Children, The Legs of the Gods, Book One. Man no longer worships the old gods, forgotten and forsaken. They become nothing more than myth and legend. But all that is about to change after the ruins of a vast ancient civilization are discovered on the ocean floor. Coast Guard officers find a series of derelict ships drifting in the current, high-priced yachts and leaking fishing boats, all ransacked and splattered with blood. Their crew is missing and presumed dead, and that's just the beginning. Do you struggle with depression, ongoing medical issues, or have you experienced past trauma? If you have, please consider the help of Energetic Healing. At Dragonfly Pond Holistic Services, we utilize Karuna Reiki, crystals to align and heal chakra function, meditation, and sound healing to address these issues and help you in your healing process. To learn more about Energetic Healing and how to contact us, visit our website at dragonflypondenergy.com. For those who call in to schedule an appointment, mention this ad and receive $25 off your initial visit.